Tonight on Catalyst, can marijuana send you mad? Science has delivered the final verdict on marijuana and madness. And an historic moment for sharks. Meet the world's first artificially born sharks. Hello, welcome to Catalyst. For thousands of years, marijuana has been used as a means of getting high and as a medicine. And today, it's our most commonly used illicit drug, with something like 750,000 Australians using it weekly. Now, some of its more dangerous side effects are well known, like memory loss, for example. But whether marijuana causes mental illness is an issue that's been hotly debated. Well, as Jonica Newby finds out, science at last is prepared to deliver a verdict on marijuana and mental illness. One morning, teenager Chris Martin smoked a few joints. Later, this happened. I was supposed to call a friend and I called her and I felt like something was wrong with her. I didn't know what, I don't know why I thought it. But um, I arranged to meet her at Flinders Street. So I get there and she wasn't anywhere to be seen. So I just started freaking out. And I was just panicked. I started seeing dead bodies everywhere. Like in pools of blood. You know, they're just everywhere you look. Everyone around is just going about their usual day, you know, just walking by as if there's nothing there. It was a terrifying psychotic episode. But was the marijuana the cause? Even five years ago, the jury was still out on whether cannabis causes psychosis. Well, that's all changed. The data have been flooding in. Scientists can now not only tell you it does, they can tell you how it happens and who is at risk. The idea cannabis sends people mad isn't new. That was the message of Reefer Madness, a 1930s cautionary tale. The weed marijuana is grown in every state in the Union. Recently, in the city of Brooklyn, New York. But by the 70s, cannabis was seen as cool. Consumption rose. And even many future doctors considered it a harmless lifestyle herb. I remember about five years ago I was giving a talk to um, a room full of my colleagues uh, on the link between cannabis abuse and psychosis and uh, one of them became so irate that he walked up to the stage and hurled abuse at me. So it did seem like heresy at the time. And the critics had a good point. If cannabis caused psychosis, how come, as consumption increased over the years, schizophrenia rates hadn't? But it turned out no one had really checked. In 2004, a London study found the truth. Schizophrenia rates have been rising in parallel with cannabis use. So this killed one of the main criticisms. It did, it did. And a second study coming out of Zurich actually uh, showed the same thing. Still, that was just two studies. The clincher came last year. Scientists decided to run what's known as a meta-analysis. That's where they take all the research from all over the world and combine the data. The conclusion, published in the world's most prestigious medical journal, The Lancet, couldn't be more clear. Smoking pot at any stage increased your risk of developing a psychotic illness by 40%. What's more, the heavier you used, the higher the risk. And while the risk to an individual is still low, with so many people using cannabis, the impact overall is substantial. Yeah, the meta-analysis showed that if you removed cannabis from the schizophrenia equation, so if people didn't use cannabis, then about one in ten people who developed a psychotic disorder like schizophrenia wouldn't develop the disorder. Well, 
of the scariest experiences of my life. Yeah, it just got so much for me, I actually pulled the knife on someone. I have no idea why. The cops intervened and sent me to hospital. It's now clear the trigger for Chris's psychosis was his use of cannabis. The question is, why? It turns out marijuana doesn't act like other drugs. In the late 90s, scientists discovered something completely unexpected. Every one of us has a natural cannabis system in our brains. It's one of our major signalling processes. And that's what the active ingredient in dope is.